Hey guys, um, today I'm going to actually review, give you guys a, a quick review, the Android uh, module that you can add on to the, your Infinity Q50 systems. Um, this module is uh, the review for the bottom screen, not the top screen. This is the unit that um, is actually made by um, Qtis, I believe is the company, the QR, Qtis QROI system. And again, it's made by the um, it's it's made for the bottom screen. Picked it up from Sammy on the Q50 forums. So um, I have not seen a review on it, so I figured I'd um, I've had it installed and been running it for a few days now, and I figured I'd give you guys a quick review. Uh, so first off, why don't we start? Um, I'm actually figured out start with booting up the system. Show you how quickly um, it boots up. It's a little bit a little bit longer than the Infinity. Uh, in touch system but not too bad so I have a timer here um, I'm actually going to start it uh, once I kind of start the car all right so here we go so pretty much just about when you see the now loading all app completes is about when um, the QRI system is actually done um, you can actually switch over at any time by pressing the menu button for two seconds. You see that's its boot up screen. So um, I'm actually going to switch back just to show you. It's pretty close to when the now loading all apps completes here. Um, this is usually about the 45 seconds. I'm actually, here is a little bit quicker today. Uh, 40 second mark. So I switch over. You see, um, it's just about coming up here. Um, I it, I am running um, Nova Launcher, which actually takes a little bit longer because of the custom wallpaper. So I haven't stopped there. About 55 seconds, so, so about 10 seconds longer. Um, part of that is attributed to the wallpaper, uh, the custom icons that I have loading, the custom icon pack, and the widget, which is kind of still loading here. Um, so you'll, you'll kind of see that going on. Um, Again, overall, not too bad. Um, you know, it again, it, it, it's pretty much, whoop, hold it down for two seconds, pretty much about, about equivalent. So um, what you see here, again, is what I customized with Nova Launcher. Um, I've kind of been able to put a weather widget on here, some couple of apps and some folders with apps within it for music and for navigation. So pretty standard as to what you can do overall on any Android tablet. Okay. Um, well, when we would kind of run through the interface a little bit, um, this is, you know, you can actually navigate, put the icons wherever you like. Over here on the left hand side is kind of your navigation bar. You have, this is for the apps running. Um, which don't have anything your home your back and your speaker um, did find one bug with this that I'll actually uh, show you um, there's an option to control the speaker the volume for the car kind of basically adjust the volume as it comes over the auxiliary input which you must use as well as there's um, an additional speaker that you that comes with the module that you can install which I did I hit it right behind the console here. Um, the reason being, I figured you may want to install this as well. Um, if you're, say, listening to regular music and you switch over um, to the Android unit, you'll still get sounds as you tap or say you wanted to use Waze, but you're listening actually to the radio. You can have Waze play. Uh, Waze give you the notification prompts over the internal speaker versus you know and listen to your music over the infinity speaker so um, there is an option but you can actually turn it on and off as you like um, but does one there's one bug I found with that that I'll demonstrate here in a second okay um, again here is um, actually just show you back here um, on the side over here is where you actually have your dock um, I've actually removed all the icons from the dock with the exception of the app drawer. I just customized that icon to um, really represent the Infinity logo. So pressing on that brings me up with the dock. 
just again my customization um, so just different icon pack uh, with some groupings how I've kind of seg segregated my different apps above okay. um, I'll take you into the settings quick standard Android so nothing really major here um, you know if you're familiar with any Android tablet it's pretty much the same this is running uh, I'll go back here to kind of show you this is running Android version 4.2.2 .2. um, this does have a custom firmware um, and build number from the vendor um, Sammy did provide the latest build which was version 6.6 very easy to update you kind of just load that onto the uh, USB thumb drive and there's an app that you can actually do the system update in here which I'll show you in a second um, actually I'll go back in there you can do system updates from here um, it's actually considered a system update not the firmware update but um, you do have the option built in in case they, they continue to release any more updates I actually do like it that to find out that there was a system update already it shows me that the vendor is still active with improving it so um, that's actually very good news alright um, again all the rest is kind of standard um, I'll show you a little bit on the uh, storage has about five uh, gigs total um, available I've already kind of used up uh, you can see here a little over a gig uh, with different apps that I've loaded and there's still three and a half kind of left available so you still have quite a bit that you can use to install apps um, I think for the most part how we're going to be using this I can't imagine that folks will actually fill it up too much um, additionally you can actually attach any USB cards um, there's actually two USB ports on the unit itself um, one you get um, a Wi-Fi adapter a very small Wi-Fi adapter that plugs into one and the second one I've, I've purchased a USB stick 32 gig which I've installed on that and that's kind of how you see here um, I'll show you in, in a few seconds there's two additional USB ports cables that um, come with the unit as well I've installed them here in the glove box which I'll show you um, re and, uh, again in, in a quick second that um, and I'll show you how to access them they will show up here if you attach um, a USB thumb drive to that as well okay. so I'm kind of back out here uh, we'll go to the main screen again um, some basic uh, customization I've done um, actually let me start from over here you know uh, everything plays uh, you can notice that everything is pretty snappy on it pops up um, start up Spotify quick um, one note the unit does indeed require a Wi-Fi connection so you can either tether off your phone or tether via a Wi-Fi hotspot um, in the car um, I actually have done both I've tested I have an LG 3 G3 um, I've used this for tethering um, I also have purchased um, a hotspot I have an AT&T as my provider um, which actually gives me better performance on that so um, I have that in the center console here which I'll show you in a bit in any case uh, here's Spotify kind of see it kind of comes up and you can kind of browse as normal Okay. Now here's one of the bugs that I, that I want to tell you. I don't know if you can hear the sound good and listen to it. Okay. Okay. See, I've turned lower the volume, but you still hear it. Um, also, notice the volume screen here. There's a speaker and an overall volume. Okay. Bring it up. I'm gonna turn the speaker on then off and then you hear the volume comes over here so that's actually one of the bugs that I found if you notice when I first brought up the volume screen the speaker button was actually unselected yet it seems every single time I start the unit um, regardless of how even if I have it unselected it still will play initially initialize the speaker and still play vol um, sounds over that um, it's not a big deal it's quickly you know it's just a very quick turn it on turn it off um, and it seems to correct itself not a big deal but it is a bug I believe nonetheless um, but overall sounds great here 
here's kind of where you can adjust the volume over the auxiliary input so that it'll match the same volume when you switch back over to the radio so you don't have one necessarily louder than the other um, kind of about where I have it here seems to kind of work about best again um, switching over back to the radio or to iPod that seems to about match okay um, you can actually again also launch multiple apps no issues um, it does multitask and keep both things active pretty well the only time I've seen the units actually slow down is when I'm downloading apps off the Play, Play Store um, it looks like that does cause it to slow down a little bit and, and not react to some of your touches um, as quickly but other than that it is pretty snappy um, and works you know pretty much anything you want to do so you'll see here um, here's our Q50 forum site kind of just brought up uh, can kind of navigate into you know any of the topics uh, and I'm just kind of pull this up using Chrome okay and I still have Spotify playing in the background okay so I can kind of go back if I wanted to kind of bring down the top I can kind of switch back to Spotify okay. and I can kind of stop that if I wanted to right and kind of just exit back out um, switch. Whoops. Um, that was um, Spotify. I have Power Amp here for kind of local music that I put on the USB card. Again, no issues. So pretty much most of your apps. I haven't found anything that hasn't worked on here yet. Um, show you navigation. Um, some folks had some questions about Waze. Waze launches on here without issue. See, so it's already locked into my position. Kind of loading up. I actually had used it today. Mm -hmm. So it kind of comes back up. Features and functionality work without issue. I also have Google Maps on here, which I do find loads a bit slower um, than Waze. So I actually do enjoy using Waze a little bit better, um, but kind of do have this for um, the Google speech. You know, if you, you kind of want to put input, uh, speak to it, and it'll actually look up some places for you. Um, I'll give you a quick demo of that now. So let me actually exit out of that. And I'll just kill some of the things that kind of were, were recent apps right. so um, here's what for my, my Google app right here I can launch it I actually also connected the microphone I have the microphone right behind the steering wheel over here um, it works uh, relatively well I'll show you that in a little bit as well um, I've just run connected it back back here to mount it with two-sided tape you really don't see it unless you kind of are poking your head back there and routed the cables underneath here on the side um, all the cables that pretty much come in are pretty long so you can kind of maneuver um, the accessories wherever you like also have the GPS in the passenger side um, um, right next to the uh, the glove box and I'll show you that in, in a few as well but in any case let's start that up okay so here's here's Google now okay Google how far is it to Providence the drive from your location to Providence is 16.1 miles okay. so you see I didn't touch anything besides starting Google now all right I'll talk to it again navigate to Providence Providence, all right. Starting Google Maps.
Head west. Okay, there you go. Uh, so it's, it's pretty much here loading can give you some directions. You can actually do the same thing with Waze. Waze has... You are uh, on the fastest route. You should reach your destination by 8.50 p.m. Waze also has um, the voice input as well, um, which I actually prefer using Waze over the Google Maps, but um, sometimes I kind of just like to have the, the maps here, see, see if it's similar, uh, particularly since the stock maps uh, may not be may not be accurate for some areas you'll have them on Google okay. so I'll exit out of that and I usually back out but you can quickly if you wanted to either go home bring up your recent apps and then just kill it as well so no issues there okay. um, we looked at kind of some of the music apps video um, again works pretty well um, I actually use MX player for this, my standard video player. Um, this being a smaller screen than the top, this I believe is about a six inch screen. The top is a seven inch. I believe both of these actually have the same resolution, which actually means you actually get a better picture on this bottom one than the top since you'll have a higher um, pixel density um, with the small screen than you will with the top. Um, but the picture looks great. Sounds actually great with the interior here. I want to just move forward a little bit, see if we get a little bit of action. Again, the picture looks great here. You notice it, um, the navigation bar on the, on the left side kind of hides, as well as the status bar up top also goes away when you're watching a video. Um, I have tested it while driving. I don't recommend it, but the video will indeed play um, while you're actually driving if you have something up here on the screen. Okay. back out of that um, YouTube YouTube plays you know fine as well you know the movie I actually was uh, loaded on my SD card uh, uh, that I mentioned I have uh, the SD USB stick permanently mounted um, so it works there um, actually what is this this is new uh, oh, thanks so in any case, again, this plays without issue. You know, we'll be streaming something over the uh yeah, why don't we just watch that? But streaming it over the internet. That's actually an ad here. Eyebrows are not eternal. They're okay. cool. They will have a dust. There are relics. But again, no, no issue. I've actually loaded um, HBO Go because I'm an HBO subscriber and that works well as, as well. Um, different tools you can use um, something for your file manager I use solid explorer um, again you can load any widgets that you like on here um, and you notice all this kind of the look and feel here this is based on Nova launcher so you can uh, load your um, launcher of choice um, let me just switch over here quickly 
Okay, this is the stock launcher that comes with the unit, um, which you can, you know, gives you kind of six main um, icons up top that you can link to whatever you like. Um, the underlying apps, and then you can load an additional six down below. Here's how you kind of get to the stock drawer. Actually, when I hit this, unfortunately, this is going to go back. All right. Um, so this stock launcher is not bad. You can see I don't have the weather linked. Um, I actually have the play button linked to Google Play. So um, that's the stock. If you like that, that's great. It is a little snappy. It is ba pretty basic. There's not a lot of customization with this beyond kind of um, you can't change these icons. You can change the apps that you put down here and drag and drop them however you like. Um, but that's about it. So I kind of wanted to customize it myself, which is why I use Nova Launcher. Right? But you can stick with that if you like. Right? So kind of going back here, you can use any launcher you want. My um, my launcher preference is Nova Launcher. Right. Um, kind of really the last things to kind of show you. Um, I'll show you kind of just the USB port and kind of how to copy files on that. So what I have here is a USB thumbstick. Um, I'm actually going to see if I can show you it here. It may be a little bit dark. I'm going to open up the door here so I get a little bit more light and kind of show you what, how I've actually installed this here. Okay, so over here you're going to notice is the uh, USB ports that I've, that come with the unit. All right, this little box I've actually picked up at uh, Radio Shack. What I wanted to do is kind of not have the cords dangling. Um, I wanted to have a unit that was kind of stable. So what I've done, and let me see here, give me one second um, to see if I can shine a little bit more light on this for you. Okay. So there you go. Um, one second, let's try to stabilize this one hand. Cut. So this is just a little box I picked up for about $3. I mounted the USB ports in here, kind of tied the cables together with some electrical tape here, and just pull this aside. My intent is just to just keep it here in the glove box and use it as needed. I don't expect to use it all that often, but um, I want a kind of a little bit of a clean look and didn't want them sticking out. Um, I do lease the this Q50, so I did not want to mount them permanently, make any holes. Um, and in this way, I can just kind of remove the whole unit um, when, I'm re when I'm done and ready to turn in the lease. All right. So the way this works, Okay, as any other, I mean, it's just like a normal computer. Just put this in here. Okay. And the screen, you know, the, the unit will recognize it. Oh, oh okay. Uh, so here on the left side, it shows you the... This is the storage card that I have installed. It comes up as USB 0. This one's USB 1, um, which is the memory stick that I have in here. So what I'm just going to quickly do, you'll get a sense for how speed, which is in bad. I'm going to navigate into here. All right, I'm going to copy over this um, album from Santana, which uh, I'm a fan of. So I'm going to just select that. Okay, and over here, copy it, and over here I'm just going to do a paste. Okay, and we'll just time it here a second, you see it's not too bad, it's pretty speedy, it's only one album, but it'll be done relatively quick here. Okay, 
and that's it. Then you'll see that the folder that I copied there with the music is already there. And now one thing the unit does complain a little bit if you just pull it out. Um, and I haven't found out, if you just pull out the memory stick, haven't found out a way to kind of clear the error message, it'll show up top. So ideally, I mean, it doesn't really seem to do any damage, but I guess the way you're supposed to come here is navigate into here and just do an unmount, which is this one here. which is unmounted, then I can pull the stick. This is kind of what I was mentioning to you. I'll show you here in a second. All right. It always shows up that removed USB stick, um, complains to insert a new one, and I can't clear it. Not a big deal, doesn't cause any problems. Just a kind of another annoyance. You'll just see that up top if you if you're not running. Uh, so with Nova Launcher, I have it hiding the status bar, so it doesn't really bother me much. If you're running another um, dashboard, another launcher that doesn't hide the top up, it'll just be another status icon up top that will probably annoy you, but overall not too bad. Um, that's pretty much uh, with the unit. Um, I will actually show you as well where I've installed the microphone as mentioned and I'll show you what I'm using for a hotspot. Uh, so bear with me one second, I'm just going to navigate to the other side. Alright guys, um, hopefully you can kind of see this. Um, bear with me a minute <laughs> with the audio, uh, with the alerting. Uh, it's because I have the door open. Um, but just wanted to give you a quick view of where I have uh, two things installed. So here, hopefully you can kind of see that, is where I have the microphone installed. Again, kind of just sitting there with some double-sided tape. Okay, it, it actually works pretty well. You saw me kind of um, actually was sitting in the passenger seat and actually was able to um, activate Google Now by just hitting the button. Additionally, here is where I actually have the toggle switch. Um, just pressing that button will actually switch back and forth between InTouch and the Android unit and um, will not require you to hold on the center button for two seconds. All right, so those two quick here and you'll see both of these kind of ran behind the, the cables are run right behind the, uh, the steering wheel and back down here and underneath, um, just right under here. Um, okay. All right, I'll show you the center console, the hotspot here uh, in a second. Bear with me. Okay, so here's my center console. Um, hopefully you can kind of see this as well. and kind of shine uh, a little bit more light in here for you. All right, um, this is kind of just a little tray that I picked up off of AliExpress. Um, but back here is where I kind of wanted to show you. Um, that's an AT&T Velocity hotspot. Um, that I have it um, kind of just permanently sitting in here, power it off of a USB cigarette so light adapter, and that just provides me the uh, uh, my Wi-Fi connection to the Android unit. Uh, works pretty well. Uh, some some nuances with it. Um, it has an option to automatically go to sleep when not in use, which I found to be problematic. Um, that's probably, that's not on the Android unit because it gave me the same trouble with my um, connecting to it via my phone. So there might be other options out there for you. Um, that's pretty much the cheapest one that AT&T provides. I actually picked it up off of eBay um, used. So I'm not sure if it's the problem with the unit or with um, that particular model in general. So in any case, um, having it permanently on seems to work well, no issues. All right down here where you may be able to see as well is the UX uh, the auxiliary cable that con uh, that connects right here this aux cable that connects into the aux input that is specifically for the android unit additionally here is the SD card reader okay um 
that you also get with the unit. I probably will never use mine as I'll do all transfers pretty much via the USB stick, but it is an option that comes with it as well. All right. Okay. Here is where I've installed, uh, I wanted to show you, here's, here's where I installed the GPS unit, GPS antenna that comes with it. So it actually connects right back here. I'll show you that here quickly. So this actually just comes right out. I'll actually just lower the glove box so you can kind of see. Um, zoom back out a second here. This pops right out. Just kind of pull. Okay. You can pull that right down. Shine some light on here so you can kind of see. Right. And here you'll see the GPS antenna. Um, it's actually mounted right here. Okay. That's that's the antenna that you get stock with the unit right here. Um, it actually, I'm um, not sure how, but it actually just kind of, I think there's a little bit of magnet on this. It actually just connected it right to, there's a metal post right here. Um, and you can see I've, what I've done is sits right there. The cable is being run right underneath here. Um, um, don't feel like taking it down, sorry guys, but um, right underneath here this black piece if you can see actually just pulls right down um, it's just held in there with two snap clips you can actually pull right down and the, the cable can be run right in there and then just kind of have it routed right back underneath here so um, again very easy to kind of install um, and just position the GPS antenna right there works very well you saw um, when we brought up ways locks right on no issues whatsoever all right so um overall again um pretty pleased with the unit pretty much gives me everything i want with it um primarily i use it for you know music streaming i can check my calendar from somewhere i'm gonna check my email quick or uh, online uh, form if i happen to be stationary somewhere um ways absolutely comes in handy um you know you, you did notice I'll kind of zoom out here in a second. I do have the navigation up top, um, which does work for me, no issue. Um, but it is nice. If I'm going somewhere, I can actually have ways down here as well, which will automatically give me, kind of divert me if there's traffic ahead, etc. So it actually is pretty nice and still useful on the bottom screen. Um, I actually liked and preferred um, getting the Android unit on the bottom screen myself my opinion reason being is you know i have the navigation up top um, i like the way it integrates with having the spotify any of the music videos whatever on the bottom screen i think it actually completes in touch much better and looks pretty seamless in the car um, you know if you guys don't have navigation up top then i think it's a no-brainer and you get the unit that is being sold for you know the top screen to eliminate that stupid clock that infinity has up there i truly believe they probably should have replaced this screen with either a cubby hole something else than just giving you a, a stupid clock um for not selecting the navigation option in any case those users who did not you do have an option that's available um it's not publicly available yet. I think, um, you know, there is an, another forum member that will be offering that up, I believe, by the end of this month or in early June. I believe they're still working on um, getting some updates to it. But, um, again, overall, I think I'm pretty happy with the unit. Um, the only negatives I found is, yes, it's a running Jelly Bean, um, Android Jelly Bean, which is not the latest. However, haven't found anything that does not work on it yet. Um, I'm not crazy about this navigation bar here on the left. I wish you could hide that. It would auto hide, um, but doesn't really get in the way, um, you know, too bad. Um, so not a big deal. Again, the volume here, that's the only bug that I really found. Um, that's probably can sure be fixed in a newer version, a newer firmware. Um, I'll mention that to Sammy, see if that's something that um, the team can provide a fix to in a future update, but overall we're, um, very good um, Connects pretty quickly to the Wi-Fi starts up 
pretty fast um, same as kind of the in touch so overall I think gets a thumbs up for me um, highly recommend if you guys are an Android user highly recommend getting the unit and again you can customize it however you like I'll be creating some additional dashboards for it kind of trying out um, some different looks and feel to this so um, stay tuned for that I'll share them on on the form if you guys want to download them and install them as well so um, give me some feedback if you guys have anything else um, again I'm, I'm using it pretty much every day if you have any specific app or questions uh, on to whether something really works with this or not let me know be happy to test it out for you guys um, all right thanks again take care